Hey there, welcome back. Today, we're gonna to try to get some body panels on this car, starting with the doors. Garage time. Now, if you saw the first drive video, it was a lot of fun, at least for me, to drive around with the car without doors, and it's lightweight, it's like a go-kart. So I think a lot of people agree it's kind of fun to have a like a buggy with uh, real lightweight stuff, kind of minimalistic. Well, that has been my goal all along. So you're not gonna see a lot of heavy components going back in these doors. No regulators, probably gonna use plexiglass. So it'll be as if they weren't even there. But of course, it looks better with the doors. And the same is true for the rest of the car. It is very minimalistic. All I really want in this car is basically a steering wheel, a seat, an engine and a gas tank. That's all you really need to have fun. And that's been the premise of this car the whole time. Stiff chassis, high performance, lightweight, minimalistic. I have the vulnerable areas covered with this shrink wrap and also some tape on the hinges. And then I have these undersized pins that are actually just drill bits with tape on them. They're a little smaller than the actual pins. That's gonna allow me to put the door on easier and then I'll swap them out later. You guys know I love my hammers and you'd think I would stop using hammers on my car, but got to put those pins in. These are the real pins. I'm going to tape up my hammer and then uh, grease up the pins and try to just get them in there. I'm not worried about the paint on the pins. I'm going to come back later and touch that up with either an airbrush or just a regular brush, but I do want to get them in there and get them installed so they're nice and tight. I'm also going to tie this string on here so the door does not hyper extend in crash itself into the paint. Okay, we'll start a little conservative right there. And then I'm gonna take the top pin out and hammer in the new pin. Now I'm gonna be supporting the weight of the door as I work the pin in and out. It's kind of a delicate balance. Zach's already gone inside. Probably could use some help here, but in, in honesty, it's, it's kind of a, a, a feel in, in, in left and right hand kind of thing. So I'm just gonna go for it. These hinges have been rebuilt. There's bushings on the door portion, and I've fixed those in the past before I did any of the sanding. It's out. And the new actual pin going in. So it went in pretty far and then stopped, and there's no more play in it. So at this point, it's just hammering at home. It's, go it's going in with this hammer. I wish I could show you better with the camera, but there's really no access. Uh, it's going in, but it's, I feel like it's about to stop. Let's try a little more. Okay, good progress. The paint is okay. okay. Right behind the pin, there is a little bit of tape left over. I think you can see the tape. That's not a scratch, by the way. No damage at all so far. Everything is really still pretty clean. This is the area where I was hammering. So I'll try to give you a quick abbreviated view. Basically I had the hammer just sliding up and down just like this. And trying not to rub on the paint too much, but just gliding along. It's got these little splines on it and those splines are about halfway in. So you can push it in a little more, but I'm gonna do the other pin first and then we'll come back maybe with something else and 
hammer it a little bit further. You don't want that pin to fall out, of course. Okay, we'll do the same thing on the lower hinge. This one should be a little easier. There we go. Get the new pin ready. in. Yeah, no play at all on the door. You cannot feel any wiggle, but it does move freely. So hinges are in great condition. Just below the oiling hole, there's a little scratch right there. And that's just on the corner right where the paint was easy to chip. Just need to adjust the fender just a tiny bit. Fender's going to go back just a little bit and that'll close up the gaps just a little bit more. But this is basically how it was when we were sanding. Really nice fit. So I'm going to put these in my ultrasonic cleaner, grease them up again, and they'll go in for the final time. Here's the parts out of the ultrasonic cleaner. Uh, they come out great. Uh, I'm going to link to that ultrasonic cleaner again because it's a real time saver. I had cleaned these prior to all the sanding and they were okay, but now this thing is like spick and span, really nice. But I did have to use my dental pick to pull out some wax. So the grease, which is like 50 years old now, will turn into like a waxy stuff. So it's stuck in that spring, scraped all around just like a dentist would, I guess and picked out all that old grease. I use this stuff, TriFlow. This is for bikes. It's uh, like a Teflon lubricant. It's not supposed to attract dirt. And I don't think you need a lot of grease on this thing. It moves uh, really well now. So that's like, here's the thing that closes and then this releases it with the door press. It's a little cramped in here now because it's raining outside and I have both cars inside. As we get through that, it's supposed to be raining for a couple days, so we'll see what we can get done. We'll adjust that latch position when we get the rubber seal installed, because that puts pressure on the door going out. So there's the gap along the door bottom. Looks really nice. A little bit low here towards the rear, but I'm going to adjust that out with the latch. So once again, no scratches on this side. If there's any advice I can give on putting the doors on, it's just be confident. Uh, if, the, if you think you're gonna scratch it, then you probably will. So I was just um, confident. I tried to trial fit the pins. I use small diameter pins to get things kind of started. It's hard to get things started. And then once one of the pins or both pins are in, it's a little easier. Things are lined up really well. It's a little easier to get the actual pins in. These are the replacement bits that rebuild these things. So this one is in position. This one right here is totally missing. Uh, I'm not gonna do it right this minute because I wanna get these replated.
Yeah, I think that did it. That's perfect. Okay, that is a big relief to me to see the door go on for the final time and it fits. If you've watched these videos for a while now, you'll know that I spent an enormous amount of time on getting things to fit. That's part of the story on this car is that every piece is unique from a different car. Got a little bit of dirt on it from the first drive. Okay, let's keep it going. Put the deck lid on. These hinges have been hanging out in a bookshelf somewhere and the deck lid has been in my house in my closet for I guess almost a year. Same with the doors. My doors have been on our guest room bed for like uh, also a year. So props to my, my uh, lovely wife for allowing me to keep car parts in the house. There's some special shoulder bolts that go through here. So I just want to verify that with paint, they still go in and spin okay. You want to put the nut on? This way or? Yeah. That little blue thing is pointing to the outside. Looks pretty centered to me. Okay, I've got an extra shim on this side and I put some shims on this side too. It looks pretty level. Uh, this side might be a tad low. So now it's time to try to open it. And this gap right here is tight. And when it opens, it gets even tighter. So we're just going to watch that one really carefully. Like I, that is very, very tight. It does open, but it's extremely tight. The height here can be adjusted with these little bumpers. You screw these bumpers in to lower the, the height back here. Pull it. Yeah. It definitely has clearance now, no touching there. You have to get that from the inside too. Or maybe not. There's a view from this side. Like I said, this one might be just a tad high. But I'm going to let it be, let it settle down. Sometimes these things change a little while over time. So I kind of like this open window here to the engine. And the other thing I noticed is that this hinge is very close to that air cleaner. I didn't realize that the 912 engine was going to push the envelope here. But it's pretty close on that side. And right here, it's also pretty close. This deck lid is unique in that it doesn't have any lumps. Normally there's lumps right there, I think for the rear windshield wiper or something, but in several places this has been de-lumped. So it's a much smoother look than most deck lids. And I plan to do my own custom grill. And of course these are custom bumperettes too, a lot smaller than the original this one on this side needs to be adjusted a little bit, so I need to loosen it and shift it up. But in general, this is the look. I'm kind of waiting for the rain to stop so I can push the 356 back out. I want to get that front fender on up there, but because the 356 is here, it's just a little too, it's a little too cramped right there, and I'm not going to risk it. These windows need a complete restoration, but I'm going to clean them up a little bit and uh, just leave them on the car. We can always come back to these and get them restored with new seals. Just gonna use a little bit more silicone oil on the rubber and just try to soften it up a little bit. This stuff is destroyed, but I don't feel like changing it right now.
Okay, the screws are a little too long. I'll get the right screws later. Windows in, and the next thing to do is put the latch in. It's still poking out slightly right there, but I think I see a break in the rain. So let's put the fender on. Okay, here we go. It's just sitting on there. Getting ready to put it on the car. Just need to get those little clips here on the inside rail. I have a few clips here from when I towed it home. There's one, two, but I'm gonna go ahead and put them all in. So go in the trunk. Brunk. Brunk. Should be at least one. We've only got about three or four of the bolts in, so it's supporting the weight of the fender. But the gap right here is really just too tight. The fender has to come up. And then down here, it's about right, although all the, the bolts that go down by the uh, inner fender bracket need to be put in. So I think what I'm gonna do now is try to get the door open so I can get these bolts in here to really control that position up. Well, it's on, still needs some adjustment. I think the easiest thing to do is to put it up on the lift, take the tire off and really get access to those fasteners. Basically the whole fender just needs to come up just a little bit. Uh, I don't know if you can tell here, but the height is just a little bit different right here. The height's a little bit different and then I need to bring it in to the hood some more. So you watch right there as the door opens, it gets very, very close. And that's why that gap just needs to be a little bit bigger, but it's on there. Hey, so we got a lot of pieces on the car today, even though it was kind of thrown together. Uh, it's going to require a little bit more care, especially on this right front fender. Um, I didn't put the sealing tape that goes in between the chassis and the fender. That's important. So I will get that dialed in and continue to finish the assembly on this car. But thank you for cheering me on and being here. So see you next week.